right, gang. Today we're taking a look at the Les Paul Jr. This is a 2015 model, the much maligned 2015 year for Gibson, where they did all kinds of crazy stuff that seemed to tick everybody off. Um, some of it warranted, some of it not. Um, but we're talking about Gibson and um, whenever they try to change anything, uh, it's usually met with uh, some anger from the purist and then again some of their ideas are just seem kind of crazy but um 2015 the biggest things that came with the robot tuners or the g-force tuners which i've taken mine off obviously um the g-force actually works pretty decent for what it is uh you know self-tuning and stuff like that but um other than than the the ease of being able to you know maybe switch into like some open tunings and stuff you know really quick um I don't really see that much of a use for it for me personally. Um, like I said, I took mine off. Um, Gibson's with their headstocks and, and just the design of it, um, you almost kind of have to kind of sweeten the tuning a little bit. And the, the G-Force tuners just tune it straight. No kind of sweetening. I mean, I, you know, you can get in there and program it, I think. Um, but honestly, I don't want to go through the hassle and the rigmarole for all of that. Um, so I just took that off of mine, put on some Grover locking tuners um, with these sweet little Ivoroid um, tuning key buttons or whatever you want to call them. Uh, looks a little closer to you know, what a junior originally had on it. Uh, the next thing they did, well, the Les Paul logo, they did the Les Paul 100 signature logo, which yeah, I gotta admit, I'm not a big fan of, but it's just a logo on a headstock when all said and done. Who really cares? Um, there's a little hologram label here on the back um, of, I guess it's the last picture of Les Paul or something like that. I don't know. I don't ever see it when I'm playing. I don't care. Uh, the brass nut, um, kind of a cool idea. You can adjust the action at the nut really easily. Um, problem with the brass was it was too soft. Um, the zero fret would get grooves in it, stuff like that. So I think Gibson kind of realized that right away and switched to a titanium nut, which doesn't do that. Um, and if you buy, even now, even on, you know, even if you buy 2015 now in 2017, um, if you call or, or you know, email them, they'll send you a free replacement nut, which is what I have on here. Um, there's also one made by Graph Tech. It's a tusk nut, and it actually kind of has a cool, it has angled slots for the, uh, for the G and a D, um, which uh, I guess would help with the Gibson angles there. Um, it doesn't have the zero fret though, not if you're into that or whatever. So uh, the frets are kind of small for, um, for you know, nowadays, but neck plate's good. Um, it is wider. It's like 0 0.05 or something like that, wider on each side. Uh, it's noticeable. Um, but I don't know anybody um, that has more than one guitar where the necks are the exact same. Um, I don't think it's, it's, no, it's no different for me picking this up and playing it and then picking up, uh, say, this Ernie Ball Valentine, which has got a pretty small neck on it, and then picking up my Charvel or, you know, any of my old Telecasters or, you know, even when I switched to 8-string. I mean, an 8-string neck is bigger than a 6-string neck. And it's not like I pick it up and I go, oh, I can't play this. I got to return it. I'm selling it. And it's just a different neck. And if you like it, fine. If you don't like it, fine. Um, like I said, I don't have any problems switching back and forth. I've never had a problem switching back and forth between guitars and necks and stuff like that. I don't really understand what all the craze is about. Oh, the necks are terrible. This neck actually plays good. It's got a killer thick, solid rosewood slab fretboard on it. Um, it's got a, I guess it's what they call their... 60 slim taper neck on it, but it does it, you know, it doesn't feel like a normal 60 slim because it's wider. Uh, but I don't have a problem with it. It's got a killer Alnico slug, uh, you know, P90. Um, it's got the the wraparound lightning bridge, as you call it. Um, I used to kind of be afraid of them in the past for intonation issues. I'm kind of crazy about intonation anyway. I'm slowly getting over that. Um, guitar is an imperfect instrument when it comes to intonation anyway. Um, and I do have this one jacked out a pretty good amount. Um, but it intonates pretty good. Um, I'm still 
toying with the idea of maybe eventually putting a different wraparound bridge on there. Um, but this one's doing fine for now. Um, I do have a tortoise shell pick guard on mine, and I switched out the, the original knobs just for some reflectors. I change knobs on the majority of my guitars for no reason other than I like to do it. Um, mine does appear, and I've checked the end, the end grain and all that, to be a one-piece body, which I didn't think Gibson did on these. But um, when I called in for the titanium nut replacement, um, I talked to the guy about that, and he goes, no, he goes, we've used solid one-piece mahogany bodies on those, you know, here and there. You know, all through 2015 when they're making these so there are some out there i must have lucked out and got one because it definitely from all i can tell looking at all the end grain checking it out it does appear to be a one-piece body not that that matters because i have i've got friends that got these that are three-piece bodies and they sound just as good i don't think that matters i'm sure there are people out there that would argue that but i don't think it really matters i mean unless when they join them they don't join them correctly <laughs> i could that would be the only point i could think that you know, might be bad, but uh, anyway, for what it's worth, uh, it's just a killer sounding guitar. It's a simple guitar. You got one pickup, volume and tone, that's it. Uh, this is going through a Fender Champ profile on the Kemper. <laughs> So, yeah, it is what it is. It's a Gibson Jr. You know, Les Paul Jr. They're just, I, when I was a teenager into Ibanez guitars and, and all that stuff, I would have looked at one of these and gone, that's, man, gross, I don't want that. But as I got older, I just, for some reason, something changed in me, and, and I guess it's the same. And I used to not be a Les Paul guy, even though Ace Fraley was like, you know, the reason I got into guitar I was more of a Fender guy, you know, when I was younger um, than a Gibson guy for some reason. But um, now I've got more or less Pauls and I have Fenders and I have a Junior. So I guess your tastes change as you grow older, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I've been wanting a Junior. There's just something inherently cool about a Gibson and Les Paul Junior. So. And now's the time to get these 2015s because they are going for dirt cheap. Um, Sam Ash right now are selling the, the single cut juniors for, I think, you know, with coupons and stuff. Uh, you can get it for probably about four and a half. Um, I got this for, with the coupons I had and credit that I had, I think I got it, I don't remember, remember. Um, three maybe a hair less than three which for a usa made les paul jr with you know the gold hard shell case the real nice fancy case um it's a it's a great deal if you take the g-force off you can probably sell it ebay or craigslist or reverb or something like that and get some of your money back like i said the gibson will send you the titanium nut for free um, i've seen the tusk alternative about 19 bucks online so may give one of those a shot eventually um but all in all it's it's just it is what it is it's gibson les paul jr you know it's 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 about as simple as a rock guitar can get and they're great for rock and roll i mean it's just big old slab of mahogany big old mahogany neck single p90 volume and tone but yeah that's what it is i'll put some close-up pictures uh after the video. Thanks for watching.